Hey folks, Kip Adams from the National Deer Association here. Wanted to share with you a very unique buck that my daughter shot this past hunting season with all kinds of antler deformities to talk about some of what was going on here and what caused these. Now, in many cases, deformed antlers can be caused by either an injury to the pedicle, which is the base of where the antler meets on the skull here. If the antler or if that pedicle is injured, it will cause a deformity throughout the rest of the antler. And you can see this le left antler on this buck uh, certainly is deformed here, as is the right one. Or if the injury is a little higher on the antler during the, the velvet period, then the base of the antler seems normal, but everything above the injury then is deformed. Very easy to tell that way. You can also get injured antlers if there's a cranial abscess. It's a bacteria that can get down into the skull and cause kind of deformations around the base of the antlers, which also then leads to antler deformities. Or you can get an injury to the antlers caused by an injury to the body itself. If a deer is injured in the back, it's back legs, that it, the injury is actually on the opposite antler because those nerves cross as they come through the, the backbone and into the neck. If the front part of the deer is injured, the injury can either be on the same side the opposite side or in both sides and in this case this deer actually had an injury to its right front leg which caused deformed antlers on both sides the left antler is deformed but the right antler is a lot more deformed what we're seeing here now what we had is this buck an injury to its knee its right knee was about uh, the size of a, of a baseball or maybe even a little larger it was all healed over not sure if this deer had been hit by a car had it been hit by a bullet got an injured fighting or something else there was no visible uh, wound there other than a big knot around that knee and when we dressed this deer out we took a look at it and found there was all kinds of scar tissue around that joint that is exactly what caused this to happen now one thing that's pretty neat with this is you can look on this deer this was a three and a half year old buck I aged at that by tooth wear and replacement. We also sent the incisors in and then the lab confirmed through cement manual analysis that it was three and a half. So these bases on here, both of these bases are nearly six inches. That is, that is incredible bases and much larger than the average three-year-old deer in our area. That partly is from the deformation as well. The left antler, as you can see, has nearly a 20-inch main beam, but just above where the brow tine comes off is deformed here as well. It takes a pretty hard turn as it's going up. If this is all we saw, this could have definitely been the result of an injury to this antler early in the growing period. However, given the knee and certainly the deformed side on the right here, we know exactly what is the cause of this. Now, in this case, the injury was to the right leg, which caused a, a right antler to be much more deformed than the left antler. As you can see, the main beam takes a very hard turn back inside. It actually had another tine here at the end that, that, that it broke off in some point. Three times here in the back, this base is also nearly six inches. Um, one thing that's really neat with this, so is look at this drop tine. This drop tine is more than eight inches long. And one thing that's unique about it is in many cases, when you have a drop tine, they can't rub that as good as they can antlers that are, that are going up or normal antlers, which means it often ends up with a little bit wider at the tip. Um, oftentimes there's still some velvet on it. But one thing that's very unique here to take a look is this actually looks exactly like a normal antler tine. It is shaped the same, it is down to the same tip, and this one has been worn and rubbed very well, almost to a, to a bright tip at the end, just like any of the other antler tines. So very, very unique. It just makes this even a little bit cooler. Now, we had some history with this deer. We don't know uh, what happened prior to last year, but we did have a handful of trail cam picks while this deer was in velvet uh, during the summer. And uh, in all of those, we never got a great picture of it. So we knew there was all kinds of deformities going on, but never saw all the drop tine here until that fateful night uh, in our rifle season when my daughter and I were sitting in a blind, actually just down the hedgerow from where we're doing this right now. This deer came out of the brush into a brassica food plot. We saw all of this and Katie said, oh, there's that deer. And I said, yeah. And at about 150 yards away when I got in in binoculars and saw this, uh, we had it as a three-year-old deer, certainly eligible to take on our place. And uh, there are bigger bucks around. So my daughter said, eh. As soon as she saw this, she said, is that a drop tine? I said, that absolutely is. She said, are you sure that's the same deer we had pictures of? I said, it's gotta be. We don't have anything else with a deformity like that. So uh, once we got a good look at it, created an ethical shot she decided to take it and she now has a tremendous tremendous deer probably the most unique buck on the whole place uh hanging on her wall today so certainly the first uh, drop time buck we've ever had it's gonna be a long time before we get one that's over eight inches but i think one of the coolest things is that uh, how this is polished uh all the way right down here to the tip very very cool for anything else antler related deer related habitat related or how to introduce new hunters to the sport be sure to check us online at deer association 
www.thebrandmarketingmonday.com.